Okay, this is going to be a little obnoxious, but I'm going to take a victory lap here. Nobody has written and spoken and brought more attention to the problem of black violence in schools in good old Colin right here in these videos, in my books, in my articles, and in my podcast, including one coming out tomorrow. And the teachers are finally starting to catch up. Well, they're let me rephrase that. The teachers are starting to speak out. We've had probably, we've done this story now about three or four times about teachers around the country finally coming forward and saying, hey, my schools are, these schools are a mess. They're dangerous to us. And so the latest example is down in Nashville, Tennessee. And we've got a great video coming up in about two minutes, two or three minutes, about teachers, a bunch of teachers in Nashville getting together and just describing their classrooms almost word for word the way we've been talking about conditions in black uh, schools for a long time. So why don't we start with this? Uh, why don't we start with this article from a, a, a publication called Education News? Headline: Total chaos, assaults, death threats. Nashville teachers slam failed restorative justice student discipline. It does, here's the uh, text. Just we'll go through a little bit of this article. A dozen teachers in Metro Nashville Public Schools agreed to discuss rampant student violence. Rampant student violence. In a teacher town hall coordinated by a local TV station last weekend that focused on student discipline policies promoted by the super and district superintendent. Here, okay, here's the money graph. Ready? Quote, the policies fall in line with efforts by the Obama administration to reduce the disproportionate number of suspensions for minority students, mostly by keeping kids in school who don't deserve to be there and who disrupt learning for their classmates. In school districts across the country, the federal government encouraged schools to exchange suspensions for talking circles, counseling, or other restorative justice techniques that teach students there's no repercussions for bad behavior. Numerous Nashville teachers called their schools total chaos, with some receiving injuries and death threats, with no help from the administrators. Students are in school, and they are disruptive. They are running through the halls, and they are using profanity and hurting other students, said one guidance counselor. Students have become so emboldened, they are now verbally abusing school police, prompting the Metro Nashville Police Department to pull three school resource officers from two schools earlier this month and move them elsewhere to avoid harassment. Yeah, there was an article on that, too. Over and over and over. This article goes on and on and on. Large-scale disruption, large-scale black violence, violence, mayhem, chaos, black students, black schools. And the teachers are... I mean, how, I don't, the teachers are telling us as well as they can. It can't get any worse. There's no learning. It's all danger. It's all chaos. Why don't we hear a little bit of it from the teachers? Help me understand what you're experiencing every day. Chaos. Total chaos. Chaos? Just chaos. Right. I mean, there's just no accountability. For the students. More than any other issue, these veteran Metro Schools educators say that student discipline, or the lack of it, has become a huge concern under Dr. Sean Joseph as the school's director tries to dramatically reduce the number of students being suspended. Students are in school and they're disruptive and they're running through the halls and they are using profanity and hurting other students. Elementary guidance counselor Constance Wade and these teachers from across Nashville acknowledge that Joseph's push to keep children in school, especially children of color, is a good idea. But that hasn't stopped students from taking advantage of those good intentions. You reduce discipline because we cannot um, we cannot suspend students, but then by the same token, you've kind of opened up a Pandora's box because students aren't always feeling like they get consequences, so they continue. Students walk in and out of classes, 
they walk out and when they come back they're laughing and it's more disruptive because they no, they can do it. And it's like a domino effect. When one child mm -hmm. sees that nothing's going to happen, then the rest of them will follow suit. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, nothing's going to happen to me because nothing happened to my classmates. Right. One of my former students was arrested for the killing of the song singer-songwriter. The teens in court today got to the magistrate turning around, talking, and laughing enough during the hearing for criminal homicide, the magistrate threw them out. You saw where they were kicked out of the judge's the courthouse because of their behavior. Picture that in the classroom. We can't kick them out like the judge did. And I had a student that actually threatened to kill me. And when I brought that to the attention of the principal um, at the school I was at at the time, uh, they laughed and they would not do anything with a student. You're saying that a student threatened to kill you and there were no consequences. That's correct. That's actually happened twice. I was injured in December um, by a child that um, we knew had a lot of issues and I called for help and no one would come. But Joseph invoked images from the movie Gladiator during a recent meeting with principals where he suggested that teachers who want students suspended are like the crowd crying for blood. Your teachers sometimes are like that Gladiator stadium, like they want blood. They want blood and they want you to feed them. They want you to feed them raw meat. We played the clip for the teachers. I'm speechless. And appalled this is our leader saying this if we want blood if that's how you want to say it it's because we can't teach and if we can't teach the students can't learn and if the students can't learn that's a very threat to our democracy we just want to teach is this part of the problem Oh, for sure. Yes. T tell me. I mean, it seems like he doesn't even respect teachers on a most basic level. Like when you don't feel like your voice is being heard and that you're being involved in conversations and when you're being talked about as if you're a wild animal, I mean, it kind of doesn't make you feel very respected. Part of the problem these teachers say is that the district implemented the suspension policy without giving them resources to deal with children who've often faced enormous trauma. And the teachers themselves can get into trouble for sending too many students to the principal's office. So if you have a student who is out of control it could adversely affect your career if you send that student to the office? Yes. It does? Yes. And I think that is a huge part of the high teacher turnover rate here. I have children with PTSD in elementary schools. I have students with TBI, traumatic brain injury, in elementary school. And the resources that we would need for those students, my, my, Thoughts are, they just aren't there. You can't roll out something when you don't have the people in place to do it. So what I think I hear you saying is that if you're going to take suspension away as one of the tools, you've got to replace it with other tools at the exact same time. Absolutely. That's it in a nutshell. I am not trained or certified in trauma, and I don't know how to help these students be successful. I want to. I care about them. I love my students. I have um, school social workers that work with my students. They're phenomenal, mm -hmm. but they're split between multiple schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Each school needs a social worker because mm -hmm. every single school in Metro has students who have that need. And once you pair them up with the social worker, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna make changes like this, you do need that support and you need to fund it. And these teachers say they aren't sure that Dr. Joseph really understands what life is like on the front lines of this struggle. And I feel like the school system right now is contributing to this, they, they talk the pipeline to prison. By not holding our students accountable, we are contributing to the increase in crime. And that is part of the heartbreak that I have right now. This is what it looks like when reality crashes into fantasy at a thousand miles an hour, head on crash. Please, sir, I want some more. The teachers are just past the point of caring what anybody thinks about them when they tell the truth what is happening in these black schools. I was going to add two more clips to this video, but 
That would have exceeded my Minds.com limit of 15 minutes. So I'll put them in another video, and I'm going to put them in a podcast tomorrow, Thursday, when we talk about this tomorrow on my podcast. So you can check out either one there. We'll get a little bit more in-depth into it on the podcast. One came from Memphis. One came from Mobile, Alabama. Exact same story. The teachers are just sitting there going, "Uh, yeah, our schools, our black schools are just one huge cesspool of chaos, mayhem, violence, violence against the cops who go there, violence against the principals. How many of these stories have we done? How many hundreds have we done? It's all on video, people. It's not just good old Colin sitting here asking you to take my word for it. The teachers have been dealing with this for 10 years, eight years of Obama, two years of Trump, while they try to while they try to trim back the weeds that have grown up in these schools. I don't know if they can do it now or not. Don't know if they can do it. Don't know how they can do it. Unless they pull the whole thing out by the roots. Get rid of this fairy tale that black students and white students are equal in, in suspension uh, in behavior and performance. And if they're not equal, there is a disparity. There's only one reason, one reason only. And that's white racism. Boy, that's part of the greatest lie of our generation. The hoax of black victimization. That's what we expose here every day. Every once in a while, some teachers, they get, they, you know, something happens where they get a little bit smarter than they were a year or two ago. Happy to have you on board, teachers. Keep speaking out. Keep joining other teachers around the country who are saying the exact same thing. We've documented that, too. Boy, we get a ton of letters here from retired teachers supplementing their letters from white kids that went to black schools. Exact same story. Violence, mayhem, chaos. And more and more people are just getting to the point where they couldn't care less whether the black kids get angry. 